the lingo vocabulary today is papel papel higienico. Okay, you know what that is. It would have been so much easier with the picture, but papel higienico is toilet paper. And so um, I, I can... Um, I'll put that up on the Good Morning Portugal um, Facebook page. So you've got that on your phone. You can show people if you're if you're struggling at all. I mean, the funny thing about this is, what's really weird is how um, that's the thing that people seem to be bulk buying in Australia and UK and places like that. And it was great because here in Portugal, there is a, a different <laughs> um, approach to that, shall we say. And uh, so let's move now here on the, the Good Morning Portugal show. I see a few people are tuned in. Good morning to you. Come on. Who are you? Where are you? Let me know. And how are you doing today? Uh, Bo Segunda. Happy Monday to you. Um, let's have a look now. Thanks to uh, Katia Lima. Uh, but the ancient art of using the B-Day. Now, if like me, you first encountered the um, B-Day when you were on a, a foreign holiday as a child, um, this might take you a stage further if you never engaged, as it were, in the practice of using a B-Day. In the UK, where I'm from, only really posh people who had additional money to spend on luxury items, like, you know, if they were furnishing their toilet and they had extra resources, they, well, they would add a B-Day. It would kind of show a touch of class, <laughs> which I could which lends itself to a really good poem, which I won't do right now. But look here, Katia Lima, Beyond Lisbon is the name of the blog, and she provides me with some cracking content for this show, which I love to read through. Um, on Saturday morning, I was going through her guide to Portuguese music, which is really great. I, I urge you to have a look at that. And I will do a radio show, actually, and play some of those tunes because it was fantastic uh, what she was talking about. But here she's talking about Meet the B-Day, Do's, Don'ts, and My Easy Five-Step Guide to Using It Like a Pro. Forgive me if you're having your lunch right, uh, your breakfast right now, or even your lunch right now if you're having an early lunch. But um, uh, I'm going to go into this. <laughs> We're going in. So you're in Portugal. You go to the bathroom. Next to the loo, there's this thing. Look, uh, there's one. There's a very modern one. Uh, it just stands there with an aura of mystery. It looks vaguely like a seat with a tap in front. Or is it the back? Yes, good question. We've all thought that. But why, you think to yourself, would anyone sit on that? What does it do? You can almost hear it whispering, use me, you dirty little thing. Well, meet the B-Day. Just for starters, before you begin bashing the Portuguese for such an apparently pointless object, let me tell you it was the French who invented it in the 17th century. Yes, of course, B-Day does sound, of course, like a French word. Yes, the same country that gave the world the stethoscope, and the Etch-a-Sketch, both lifesavers, although in different contexts, also came up with a B-Day. Now, if you, you get a special Good Morning Portugal gold medal, if you have been in a situation where you've used a stethoscope, an Etch-a-Sketch and a B-Day all in one situation, let me know how that went. Portugal isn't the only country of B-Days, by the way. Spain, France and Italy also use them. And Wikipedia tells me, tells Katia, they can also be found in Central and Eastern Europe. And this is where most Brits would have encountered the B-Days when they've been on holiday, or if they were posh, <laughs> and had or had a posh friend who had one of these mysterious devices in their bathroom. Generally speaking, we use B-Days to wash our feet and our nether regions. I never thought I'd live to write this on my blog. Yes, before you ask, we also take baths and showers. Well said. I'm going to take a sip of tea here. <laughs> Want some dirty details? Look away now if you don't like dirty details. A lot of women will use the B-Day more often while menstruating, squeaky clean. Men use it for washing themselves after sex and as well as some men for washing their butts after going for a number two. Also, the first time I'm using this expression on the blog, let us hope it will be the last. I did, I did warn you. Some uses are common for both men and women for washing their feet to fill up with ice. <laughs> and use as a handy beer cooling station for parties. Bathtubs also serve this purpose when there are lots of bottles. Yes, Portuguese priorities here. To place your feet while polishing, clipping toenails. Practical. If you're eating your breakfast, I'm sure you'll have been put off now unless you're a very hardy type. Let's face it. To let your dog and or cat have a drink, to let your toddler splash around a bit while you're brushing your teeth, and those 30 seconds of peace and quiet. It never occurred to me to have it as a kind of child-minding, you know, thing where I'm from. Use a telly. But in Portugal, you might use the B day to keep your kids happy for a while. Um, but I'm betting there are <laughs> there are more possible uses. The sky's the limit. So um, I, I, I'm going to come back to this in just a moment. But yes, have, have you any experience yourself of a, a, a canny use of a B day? Let me know. And um, let's go into these um, five steps 
Here's my five-step guide, easy five-step guide to using a bidet like a pro from Katia Lima on the Beyond Lisbon blog. Uh, number one, approach the bidet with full confidence. Remember, you're the one in charge. Either undress from the waist down or just get your clothes out of the way so you can comfortably sit on the bidet facing the tap. Th this is, these are the questions everyone's afraid to ask, and here she is answering them. So you get on the bidet facing the tap end. Lots of different contexts here. Do I really have to explain everything? Some people will actually sit with their backs to the faucet, which sounds like a, an expression you might use in, in life or in an inspirational speech. Backs to the faucet, everyone. But unless you've worked at the Cirque du Soleil before, I'd say that's a no. <laughs> so face the faucet, guys, which is another great piece of advice, which you could use in many situations. If you're feeling fancy, this is number two, pardon the pun, if you're in the coldest month, of the past 200 years you can use warm water if not just hold your breath and splash some cold water on your bits admit it it makes you feel alive it kind of makes you feel alive well there you go there's some more value three use your soap intimate wash gel <laughs> who uses intimate wash gel uh, whatever of preference and just wash yourself like you normally do when you're showering pretty basic right so there's no need to be afraid number four use a small towel to patch yourself dry you're supposed to have one towel for each family member yes especially at the moment enjoy that invigorating freshness down there ah feels good doesn't it um aren't you glad this isn't an instructional video if after all this you still think b days are simply too odd just remember you're totally free not to use them unless some B-Day freak points a gun at your head, in which case I would strongly advise you to, yes, use a B-Day. They don't exist, really. Let's not give Portugal a bad name. Um, and a little bit of um, a little bit of a, a, a added information about the, the whole family having a towel. Uh, if you ever buy towel sets in traditional Portuguese shops, you'll find they come with a B-Day towel, which are about a third of the size of hand towels. I was surprised to see that some people believed there would be one single B-Day towel for the whole family. <laughs> Ew, that's a no. A big, round, fat no. Usually B-Day towels are changed as often as you change hand towels, unless they're dirty and need to be changed before that, of course. Yes, <laughs> they get changed on a Saturday and not before. Um, hey, your house, your rules, I'm not judging. So there you go. Isn't that awesome? Um, more great content from Katia Lima there uh, on the Beyond Lisbon blog. Experience Portugal beyond Lisbon, she says. Good advice. That's fantastic. So now you know. Now you, all the, everything you were afraid to ask about B-Days has now been answered, I hope. But any further questions, I will forward them on to Katia on your behalf. Okay, you are listening to the Good Morning Portugal show and podcast and YouTube channel. And on the YouTube channel, you will find all the wonderful houses that we feature. Yeah, and do let me know. If you would like, if you're selling a house in Portugal um, and you would like me to to advertise it, feature it for you, it's not really an advert. Well, I suppose it is, but I mean, really, I'm doing this because I'm passionate about Portugal and Portuguese property and uh, opening people's eyes to the incredible range of property that's available here. 